Okay, one issue that's probably worth mentioning is how to get your gyro set up. So it's easy to plug in and everything. Uh, just look at the, if you look at where the wires are coming out, you got black, red, green. So then on the opposite side, you also want black on the bottom. I don't know if you can really see it, but the black on the bottom here, then the, the black goes on the bottom where the servo plugs in. And it's the same thing down on the receiver. You just follow the same wiring scheme and you're not going to be able to see it in this video, but where they plug into the receiver down there, just make sure all the black wires are on the bottom and you will be fine. Now the other part that gets to be very frustrating, and I had a little bit of trouble with this one as well, is figuring out where to set the gain and all that nonsense. So if you look at the receiver, a couple things at the transmitter, I found for one thing that after reviewing this a little bit further, so there's your rates switch, there's your head holding switch, so that's going to have to be down. I also noticed that this thing here on the top, this thing on the right hand side, when it was set way up and I wasn't really paying much attention to it in the beginning, it was really overcorrecting wildly, so I turned it all the way down and then behaves much better. I'm going to throw it on the uh, turntable and demonstrate that for you so you can see exactly what I'm talking about because uh, it was giving me fits there in the beginning. Okay, we're fired up here, ready to go. What I'm going to try to de demonstrate is some of the problems that I went through in trying to get this gyro set up. So at the moment, it's just a little bit more than half. It's probably at around, oh, 60%. I've got this knob here turned all the way down. We'll spin it up and then we'll throttle up and down, see how it goes. Pretty stable, throttle up, throttle down. Okay, within normal acceleration range, it wasn't too bad. Now I'm going to do the same thing, except I'm going to turn this thing all the way up to the maximum. Now that's the problem I was having before. I didn't realize what the issue was with this thing. So I'm going to, just overcorrecting, I'm going to turn it down all the way to the lowest point and then I'm going to tweak it up and see if I can find a sweet spot with this thing still set at the same 60%. All right, not exactly where I want it. Still not. When I accelerate up and down, I want it to stay put. So we're going to try increasing this a little bit. I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to reduce the gain here just a little, or increase it rather. Go maybe 
eighty percent. set to go. Okay, notice we got a slight amount of wag that they always describe. So I think we're very, very close. I'm going to drop it back just a tiny bit. Okay, not too bad. So, final settings. This thing is about, oh, 70%. You can see the line is about at that angle. And I've got this little channel 5 button is actually all the way down. That seems to work really well for this one. It may be different on yours, but hope that helps. Okay, ready to do a little test flight here. Got our training wheels on. Well, that wasn't too dramatic. We just ran out of battery and the BEC kicked in. This is your battery elimination circuit, so it'll cut the power to the motor before you lose control. Well, that's it. Good to go.